Hi, it's Lou Hardy and in this video we're going to talk about getting organised. So when you start a business, an online business in particular, there's a number of things you need to get ready. A lot of people just want to get up, get their website up and start posting content, which is fine. But what will happen is you'll find you'll start accumulating a lot of different things. And if you're not organised from the very beginning, um, trying to actually catch up and organize yourself afterwards uh, can be a bit of a, a hassle. So in this short video what we'll do is we'll cover um, things about your computer, what type of computer you're going to use, uh, how to organize files on your desktop, we'll talk about the, the individual files, creating files and creating folders and uh, spreadsheets and how to organize everything in Google Docs. Google Docs is a great way of doing that um, for all sorts of different uh, office files at the moment. So whether you're using a desktop, a laptop, uh, an iPhone, an iPad, uh, it doesn't really matter because once you create the folder you can have it available on all of these platforms. Okay so in here we've got um, some folders. So here's my desktop. Now if I wanted to create a new folder I would just go right click on my mouse, new and folder. Right, then the folder would appear here and if I wanted to name the folder all I'd need to do is right click, rename and call it something that I wanted, for example articles. Okay, so if I wanted uh, articles folder, articles, let's spell it right, um, then I could do that. Now I've already got an articles folder anyway um, in in this folder here. So this folder here is known as my 21C blog folder. So I'll use this folder uh, to collate all the information that I've gained and the data that I've collected over the last few weeks. So what, what we do is we double click on that folder and then inside here I've created you can see a number of other folders. So any articles I've written or blog posts um, I could place it under the articles folder, any audios I place under this folder, images I file in here and videos etc. Now to create a new folder within your main folder I just right click, I go new, new folder and I could call this one blog posts. Simple as that. So then any new blog posts I may be writing I could p file them in here. So let's have a look in these folders. So article, so any article that I've written, this one here is a beginner's guide to SEO. So I could, when I open this folder, so this is an article I've written. It is quite simply just on a, a Word document and you just type your article and then when you go to file, save as. So you can go to file, save as and then save it into your folder. So up here it's computer, main, uh, my blog and articles folder. So by, a, by actually saving and keeping your folders neat and tidy it just allows you, um, you know, just a quick reference guide of where to get hold of all of this stuff. Otherwise you're just chasing around your desktop looking for your information. So if you can get into the habit of keeping organized earlier it'll save you heaps and heaps of time of hassle later on. So again another article write it, save it, file, save as into that specific folder. Now some of you obviously know how to do this. This is mainly for the people who don't um, and to help them get organized. So as you are creating content you need to save it into this. So when your blog becomes ready or when you're ready to post your blog or your article you can simply file it in here. So all of the articles that I've created which are you know hundreds of articles and hundreds of different blog posts for different websites I have. However in the previous video where I spoke to you about adding Facebook notes this is where you add that note, um, this article into that Facebook note. Um, but you keep, keep a file here. So for example you may have um, you know a new folder called social or Facebook where you've got all of your Facebook notes added in here. Same again you just um, I could open one of these articles for example I'm going to file it again save as but this time I'm going to go into articles uh, sorry into Facebook and I'm going to save it there as well. 
okay so when I have a look in this in under Facebook you can see the article now appears here as well as in the actual article folder there same goes for audios um, audios are quite easy you can just upload them on your phone uh, you could do it on the computer which I'm going to give you an example now anyway but if you've got audio where you've just spoken about some content or a subject that you want to talk about then upload it into this file under audios again it keeps it all together it keeps it all clean and neat uh, and easily accessible for later same goes with anything else that you have any images so for example here's a couple of images that are that are added into my folder um, once I either take a photo of them or I buy royalty free images or I have images from photos example uh, for example I'll uh, paste them in here um, they'll normally be added just as the date it was taken so for here I could rename it as SEO 22 for example whatever you want to name the image it's just a matter of right clicking on the subject and renaming it because it gives you a lot of different options you can preview it you can edit it um, but ideally we're just either renaming it um, or copying it or moving it up into a Dropbox folder uh, online so whatever it is that you want to do with those images same as videos if you've got videos you could store them in here which are videos taken directly from your phone um, so these are the main you know media content that we'll be using for the okay so let's talk about a little bit about audio I know that a lot of people want to have audio on their website it's a it's a great way of doing it because you know people if they don't want to read your article they can actually just listen to it so many of my articles I've got the article written but I also read the article out and save it as an mp3 file and then later I may create a video based off that article um, so then that way you're giving three different forms of, of media and content Google loves it because it is great information and you've got you know not just one article written but you've got the video and also the audio now what I use is just a free software called uh, Audacity A-U-D-A C-I-T-Y Audacity so you just download it it's for free and um, I can just record like I'm doing now I'm recording as you can see uh, what I'm talking about so once it's recorded then I can play it back and then it'll file it as an mp3 file and that's the extension that we want to save it as so let's just have a look at that now right so you can see that I've just recorded that piece now let's just play it back I can just record like I'm doing now. I'm recording, as you can see, uh, what I'm... Now, hopefully, you just heard all that. Right, so what I do is I go into File, and I use the Export. I don't do Save As. I use the Export button here. Right, I export it, and I've already created a folder called eNetwork Blogging, but in this case, I'm going to put it in the folder that we just created um, before. So once I find that, that was on the desktop, I had it, didn't I? So my 21C blog, audio, I'm going to call it Lou Test MP3. And then I'm going to save it in there. What will happen then is a box will pop up. So I'll just type in Lou Test MP3. And then... Um, well, that probably should be under the artist's name. It's really your reference, so it doesn't really matter. And then I just go OK. So then now it's uploaded. So let's check it out. So here it is here. OK, so you can see it here. Lose test MP3. I'll open it up. And this is it here. It gets to appear here. The good thing is though is that I can now upload that into any blog post right so in the next um, video when I'm writing about blog posting and how to do it and how to add media you now know how to do it it's just a matter of add media find the folder that you've got that media in such as an mp3 and then simply upload it and then what it does it converts it into a nice um, plugin so you can see the user just has to press play and then it just uh, plays for them so check that out that's audacity um, how to add audio uh, audio to your 
blog post. The next thing we'll talk about is um, organizing your folders and let's have a look at a spreadsheet. Okay, the next thing we're going to cover is Google Drive. Now, most of you should already have a Gmail account because what you can do is any emails you can have redirected through your Gmail account. In fact, almost all of my websites, when I first set them up, I might have the website name, but most of them just come all through my phone under uh, my Gmail account. So when you set up your Gmail account, you'll find that your little box is up here on the right-hand side. Right, so what you need to do is, you can see this tab here, you click that, that tab, and you've got a number of different options. You've got Google+, Google Search, YouTube, so whatever account you set up in Google uh, is all contained in this section here. So what you do is um, Maps there, Gmail, so if you want to check any of your Gmail accounts, but what we're looking for today is Google Drive. So you click on Google Drive, and what will happen is this box will appear. Now this box is a great way of working out how to store content. right? So for example, here on the left, there's a number of different um, things that I have. I can either have it switch view, so I've got my just a lot of different files that I use. Now the good thing about Google Drive is that these are live documents, so whenever you change it, they are automatically updated live. So there's no worry about having to go searching for Excel spreadsheets in your fault in your desktop or on your phone. You just log into your Google account and it's all contained and housed and it's absolutely safe and secure within Google. So for example, I want to click on the Google blog um, Excel spreadsheet which I've created for this demonstration. So up here, what I've done is I've just simply created a, a spreadsheet. You can see that it's uh, it's got the same form as what a normal Excel spreadsheet has. So I'll show you how I did that. So on the left hand side here, you've got create. So I can press the create button. I can create a new folder. So you could have a series of folders created. If you want a, a Word document, you can create a Word document. If you want a PowerPoint presentation or a spreadsheet or a form or a drawing. Whatever you want, you can contain in this. So for example, if I want a new spreadsheet, I just go spreadsheet, then a new tab opens up. Up the top of the spreadsheet, the tab I could call it, um, I could call it marketing ideas, for example. So any any marketing campaigns or ideas I want, I can, I can place up there. Then you press um, um, marketing ideas and there it is there. And then you just go ahead and use use it like a normal Excel spreadsheet. You can see you've got file, um, you can download this, you can publish it direct to the website, you can make a copy, you can save it as an email, or you can just keep it on your desktop. If you want to extract the information that's in here and cut it elsewhere, then you can just export it. So it's got all the similar features uh, normally found in an Excel spreadsheet. So let's go to the one I created earlier. So on the bottom here, um, oh sorry, up the top, I've clicked on the first tab I've created. When we're looking at getting organized, is getting all your legals sorted out. So for example, if you're operating in a company or a trust or a LLC, whatever it is, I like to keep it all tailored uh, and clean. So the business title is, this is for property, there's my property entity, the ACN and ABN, the tax file number, phone numbers, etc. Same as online business, I might have a separate entity for uh, Lose Online Blog Proprietary Limited, ABN, ACN, tax file number, etc. So any businesses that you're creating that you've got an ABN uh, or a trust, it's good to have it there because then it's just a quick reference. Now if I wanted to create another tab, I go down to this section here and here I've created legals, I've created logons and I've created leads. So for example, let's have a look at the logons button. I click on logons um, and it's just a matter of clicking this button here. It says add sheet and it'll just add another sheet here. And then you can just double click on it and name it whatever you want to. So let's go back to the logins button up here. This is where I may have information relevant to my website. So here I've just created date, the business name, any login details and password and the website and a remark section. So the date, 
Um, a couple of business things I've got in here, GoDaddy Namecheap there, where you can get some URL domain names. My user passwords are in this section, and then quick click to the website. Okay, so any Twitter logins, Facebook logins, YouTube logins, right, because there's nothing worse than trying to extract your logins. When you get your blog login, it'll be 21stCenturyEnetwork.YourName.com. It'll have a username and password. Your customer hug logins, you probably should put these in here. So it's a quick reference guide, and the fact that you can access these on your iPhone, your iPad, anywhere, um, and it's completely private. Now, if you wanted to share um, this information with somebody else, you can go up here and you can click the share button and you can invite or add people that you want to share this. So you may have two Gmail accounts and you want to share it to yourself so you can access the, the tools in that. So you can share it, you can keep it private um, and you know just don't give out your logins to anybody. So the next one I've created is leads. So down the bottom we've got look see a number of different um, a number of different different titles so leads logins uh, that one we just created and this one is leads okay so let's have a look at the leads the, the leads will be pretty important because what you want to do is you want to be thinking of people that you'll be able to initially get in contact with without spamming them so what I like to do is break it up into categories so. I could put down a list of my family, mum, dad, brother, sister, auntie, uncle, their phone number, their mobile, their address, um, the email marketing method I'm going to use, I might email them, or I might phone them, or I might just send them to the website. And then um, further on, it's just uh, their email address. So what it does, it just allows me to capture all of the information uh, that I need. Then the next thing is to brainstorm all of the people that you know, all of your friends. Um, also, any co-workers that you may have, any neighbours that you may be in contact with, any sports people or the sporting groups, any social groups, any groups of people uh, that you've been in contact with that you think that may like this information. Because then you just send them the email that we have and uh, your website link and then they'll make the decision for themselves. So the key is to get organised. As I said, with Google Docs, um, you can send people to the spreadsheet rather than you having to sp spend sh spreadsheets out to everybody. If you're a team leader, then you can create a series of um, Google Doc applications and spreadsheets where you can send um, your team directly to that. So just keep adding to this. My, look, I'll have a look at my one. My one has a lot of different things. It's got emails, it's got articles on my articles, it's got logins, it's got accounts, it's got my cPanel websites, it's got any tools that I've bought, it's got websites, IDs, um, it's got a heap of things. My circle of influence, my clients, uh, any AdWord campaigns I'm doing. Um, so, you know, uh, there's a lot of stuff in here um, that I create which gives me just quick reference um, to things that I need. So that's what you guys need to start doing. Um, create a, uh, a Google Drive, um, a Google Drive inbox with a series of spreadsheets and you know it'll just make it much easier for you. As I said, if later on you decide to create a Word document and you're going to write a script or an article, um, or a template, an email template, you may always want that email template. So let's have a look at one I've done previously. Um, 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 where is it? Okay. Okay, here's one here. So for example, if I've, if I've got a um, an autoresponder follow-up, then and I'm going to copy and paste the same information, I'll just use the same one, and I've just created it in here. So I don't have to go looking for it. Um, I've got a number of different autoresponders, autoresponder 1, autoresponder 2. So then that way you can just modify it and change it. The document's live, only you can see it, but you can just copy and paste it direct from there. So that's a good task to get you organized. Uh, as I said, create initially create a folder, um, create files in your folder so you can actually start working and start getting organized. and then start populating your 
your folder with different things such as audio, such as articles, such as images, start collecting images, taking photos, Facebook, etc., videos, and then get organized by putting all of your content and all your login details, etc., into Google Docs. However, you'd need to first create a page. Okay, hopefully you've learned a lot from that. Uh, watch out for the next video, which will be all about um, more about blog posting. I'm Lou. Thanks very much.